What is going on, y'all? Welcome back. Today, I have something I think that will be of interest to you. A friend of mine shipped me a few deadheads, and uh, they've been eaten on, and they're really chalky and pithy, and they're on their way out. So today, I'm going to show you two things. How to restore a horn that is chalk or beyond white to where it's uh, starting to fall apart. This particular method is not my own. It's not something that I came up with. A very good friend of mine named Keith Mack, who actually has a channel on YouTube called Take and Chase Hunting. He probably won't be thrilled about that shout out, but he's a great guy. He's a shed horn finding fool. And he found this on the internet and he's kind of fine tuned and perfected the process. I now have done a few and it's, uh, it's bitching. I'm gonna walk you through how to repair the horn, make it look new and brown, and then we're gonna crown mount these two deer. Hang in there and thank you for watching. All right, first step, we're gonna mix up some Van Dykes Fix It Sculpt. It's a two-part molding compound, goes together 50-50, just blend it together till it's all one color, and then we're gonna jam it in the large holes or areas of that horn that have been chewed on by rodents. This is gonna make up the big voids in the horn. So once you've pressed it in place, I like to spray it with like a Windex or a household cleaner, and then smooth off any of the ridges or high sides. This is just gonna fill in the big open areas. First step. If you're wondering why I'm doing all this in the garage, it's because it's a rain day and I am getting caught up. Pink wood putty. It smells like Zeke's floating bait, man. Anybody remember Zeke's? Of course you do. Everybody remembers Zeke's. Throughout this film, you're going to hear me say horn in reference to antler. I don't mean it wrong. It's just, I've been saying horns for so many years. In reference to antlers, that's where it's coming from. So the next step here is we're gonna coat that entire antler in wood putty. And what we're doing essentially, cause the antler itself is gone chalk or the sun has attacked it to where it's worn out. It's removed moisture and started to attack the bone portion of the antler. We're gonna just fill in every void with wood putty. You don't wanna to put too much on and you don't wanna remove a bunch of character, but you wanna fill it in. So around the base of the antler, toward the pedicle, the rosebuds and knurls, take a wire brush once you've put the wood putty in there. Make sure you get all that clean and nice and smooth. Once it is dry, I just take some sandpaper, scotch bright, whatever you're smoothing with, and just go over that thing and get that horn nice and slick. Next, we're gonna take white latex paint and mix it or thin it with a little bit of water. You're gonna to wanna to get the consistency of milk and then just coat that entire horn, trying to eliminate any runs, so now you have a solid white base. And the idea behind it is now you have a base, a smooth, clear, white base. If you took velvet right off a horn and it never polished on trees, you would have white horns. The polishing in the saps and the brush is what gives it that beautiful iconic brown. So once the white latex paint is dry, we're going to give it a coat of wood stain. Now I like to use Provencial on everything, as you know, but on this I used a lighter stain called Early American, and I use that color because it was recommended to me, and you're gonna put on multiple coats. It takes about three coats. That latex paint is gonna to wanna to reject the stain, and it's gonna give it that natural kind of striation of those stripes that come with a, a regular brown antler. Depending on your climate, put on one coat, let it dry for two days, second coat, 
dry for two days, third coat, dry for maybe two, three, four, five days. It's going to be a bit tacky after each coat. That's natural. That's what it's supposed to do. And you definitely, if you can, want to eliminate any runs or any drips. We're wanting this to look real consistent. So I have messed this up like four or five times. And the best advice I got from a friend was try it on a shed first. So what I was doing wrong the first couple of times as when I was going to polish off the last little bit of stain in order to get from that bright sheen to kind of a matte finish, more like a, a regular antler would be, uh, really you're looking for a better hand feel. You're never going to get it exactly right. But the key piece was the still wool. Um, a friend of mine said, man, you got to be using the, I guess it's quadruple aught. Um, it's the fine, finest, finest grate you can get. It's really, really thin, and the key is to almost just touch it. Just nothing special. Don't put anything. Remember, this is trying to adhere to itself. There's nothing for it to grab. The idea with the paint is so that it will reject it and give it that, um, that modeled, layered look. Um, anyway, this one is done. It's probably the best looking one of the bunch. These are all two layers of stain. And this has three layers of stain. I've also found that for sure, the parts that are gonna make it more difficult is the runs or drips. The part you gotta watch for. So I'm gonna do the coos deer on film. And then I'm gonna do this one because it takes quite a bit of time. but. I got some close-ups. I'll just do this one as is. Using that, I just want to show you how delicate you actually are wiping that over. Literally no pressure. You can see almost instantly it's starting to pull the, the sheen off. And that's the idea. A little something that I found out on my own my buddy Keith was saying he has trouble with the tips trying to get those tips kind of white and back to where they you know they look natural they, they, they look kind of that bright white I found that take a wire brush and run them toward the tip like that we'll pull it right down to the to the base white color because with that stain you kind of get a natural um, you kind of get a natural drip there at the end. So if you have a run, say you have a run of heavy stain, use the brush. If it's nice and if it's nice like it is here, just give it a wipe. Oh, and, and I know it, I, it's hard to tell on film, I'm sure, but I'm, I'm literally putting like no pressure. I'm just trying to brush it off, like almost like I'm sweeping the horn. Or I'm dusting it. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Like I'm dusting it. Alright guys, this is the easy part. Let's make them look good. We got those horns smooth and in the right general color, but now we're going to cut them down and crown mount them. I like to cut the front as close as I can to the base of the horn. Finally, a part I know how to do. I've done thousands of these. So I'm going to cut the skull cap nice and close to the base of the antler. Then I'm going to make a shape on a piece of half inch plywood and then I'm going to screw that horn set right to the plywood. Then I'm going to mount that plywood and horns to a solid sheet to use as a backdrop, act like a formed panel. And then I'm going to mix up what I call crown dust. It is 50% plaster of Paris, 50% 
concrete. I mix it up so it's pliable. I stick it in every little area and opening. I stick it in there nice and tight, making this great form, and then just hand shape it any way you like it, whatever shape you want, just get it good and smooth. Once it's nice and hard and rigid, I take it off the back panel, I sand it nice and smooth, I hit it with spray adhesive, and then I stretch leather over it, pulling everything nice and taut, and then I cut smaller brown leather or a contrasting color, I wrap it around the pedicle, hot glue it in place, and attach it to a panel. That's the fast version of a crown mount. I have a more thorough version if you go back several videos, but now that they're crowned, they look great. All right, we're gonna wrap up this video. Um, I've met my match. This is not something I'm great at. The horn finishing thing, it's tough. Um, they look good, right? I'm, I'm happy with how they turned out, but I know I could get so much better if I did a few more. So uh, this panel, don't laugh at me, this panel I got at the grocery store, this is for cooking like salmon, it's just a pine plank, um, or whatever they call that. Uh, I just want to have something he can hang on the wall and ship to him, but he'll, he'll wind up changing these, the gentleman that sent me these. But there they are, there's the mule deer that was completely chalk white. And uh, now that it's all crown mounted and stuff, it, it looks good. And I can tell you, if it was up on the wall, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But if you get close, you can definitely see it. And then here's that coos buck. Hopefully you can see all that. Anyway, hope this helps. Play with it. Shoot me tips. Let me know if you got some advice. Other than that, I love you. Thanks for watching.